Hi everyone, my name is Dave Eisenberg and I am the co-founder and CEO of Floored. We are a New York City-based engineering company that is trying to radically improve the way that we communicate about real estate today. We're doing this with a combination of both new hardware and new software. Let's take a look. We picked commercial real estate as our first vertical because we were both frustrated and disappointed with the lack of transparency in this industry. This is one of the leading commercial real estate marketing websites, and this is the information that you're looking for on the page. It tells you absolutely nothing about what it would be like to lease this space. And this is true from static floor plans to distorted photos to boring videos. This industry has this awful habit of giving you marketing content that what you see is not what you get. And so we set out to fix that with a transformatively better visualization solution. This is what it looks like. We use a 3D camera that's manufactured by a company in California that gives us this. This is a photorealistic 3D model of a townhouse in Harlem that's undergoing a gut renovation. As we fly into first person, you can see that we do things in 3D that you can't do in 2D. Like look at all those floors stacked on one top of another. I think of it like a real estate layer cake. We can walk through the space easily. The most important thing is that we've given the end user total control over how they navigate the experience. But perhaps what's even cooler than looking at space that already exists is showing space in a completely different condition. This solves problems for people like me who have trouble visualizing what a space could look like, or if you've got a space that's under construction or you're trying to convince a tenant to see their layout. So last Friday, I took some of our employees up to the top floor of the new One World Trade Center building being uh, constructed downtown. We collected data and we're gonna show you some of the best views in all of Manhattan. This was brand new two days ago. So as we fly in, you can see that we see the difference between the raw data that we capture directly from the camera and then the clean data that we're able to extrapolate. We do this by digitally removing the construction material inside the space. As we walk over to the window line, you'll see New York like you've never seen it before, from the top of the New World One Trade Center building with perfectly panoramic 3D views. We even showed you where we are in space relative to the 103rd floor. As we head back into the scene, you can see that we can also bring on, on new capabilities, like digitally designing the space to see what it would look like for a new technology tenant. You can see just how real this experience gets as we head over to the conference room. You see, 30 minutes ago, I wanted to show the dynamism of the system, so I threw in a picture of Mr. Arrington because he was bullying one of the other startups. <laughs> What I love about this is that this is a practical application of virtual reality. Now that you've seen the space in 3D, would you ever wanna go back and look at a 2D floor plan? Not me. So let's look at our process from end to end. We start by capturing geometric and photorealistic data using this camera. It'll be available for public sale later this year, but we've also modified the hardware. We put a digital SLR on top that we can control the textures and lighting conditions of. Our commercial customers who are paying us today ask us to render the scene in a few different scenarios. We can show you the space exactly as it is, like with the townhouse, or we can show you a full space empty or an empty space full. What's important is that every single space that we construct is both streamed through the web and then also onto the iPad. But I'm super excited to announce something brand new from us. This is the capability for an end user to edit the 3D model directly. What I did on the back end, we're exposing to you as our front end. Here you'll see a user change the time of day inside of the scene. The virtual sun is positioned to what time it really is, and that cascades light across the scene just as it would in real life. As we've unlocked the real-time lighting engine, this allows us capabilities to do stuff even more fundamental, like have a user be able to position furniture inside of the space, highlight a specific piece of furniture, rotate it, change the colors and the material properties of individual pieces, swap out entire layouts, and bring new stuff in. So in one fell swoop, we went from a super awesome tech game room to a really boring corporate boardroom. We even put in some small plants. This is virtual design at its best. I'm super pumped about the business that we're building though, because very few software companies have ever gone into the commercial real estate industry. And it's huge. $30 billion a year is spent on commercial real estate marketing services. That's stuff like sending a human in to go and measure a space by hand and generate a floor plan, or doing print marketing materials that no one wants to read and which waste our resources. 
But as we see the commercial real estate industry rushing to adopt this, we're also seeing all these adjacent opportunities in interior design, architecture, and construction. And so today, while we think about ourselves as changing the way that we communicate about real estate, in the long run, I like to think about Florida as changing the way that we communicate about physical stuff, period. Now, in order to do this, you've got to build a world-class engineering team. And I think we're starting to do this. We're building engineering competencies across hardware, photography, lighting, computer vision, computer graphics, and design. That's really hard to do. We've done it all here in New York City. This is our team. There's 10 of us. If you go to our team page, you'll see that everything we do, we think in 3D. Daniel kindly volunteered to let us show his face in a funny way. Thank you, Daniel. Investors, a lot of you have backed some of the coolest companies in this ecosystem. The 3D framework is just exploding right now. Floor is the company that's going to refine that data for commercial applications. We're changing the way that we're communicating about real estate, and we're super excited to be here at Disrupt. Thank you. Great job. Judges? Uh, two questions. One. The camera IP, you mentioned that's owned by somebody else. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. And then second question, the example of the conference room that had the, uh, the furniture and then turned into a traditional conference room, how long does that take to render from a uh, design perspective and then a, a, a rendering perspective? Sure. So Matterport's an incredible company. They're, they're based in California. I saw them in their infancy. Um, they've built a ton of IP around how you capture the data around the user interface for that data. I think about our company as having wanting to piggyback on them early on, so we built a software stack early. The truth is, is that the 3D scanning industry has been around for quite some time. Google uses 3D scanners on the top of their self-driving cars. I like to think of us as being a company that will be device agnostic about however 3D data comes in. That's the, the geometric point cloud. You can see we've already started to gather our own textures. Um, I want to support Matterport any way that I can. I think we're doing that by helping them get out here. But the truth is, is that um, we're just a company on the data side that's taking their input and rendering a different output. Your second question about how long it takes to render the space. So what I just showed you is a sped up tool that we're building for an end user to position 3D data. Um, the rendering component we've actually taken out because we're building a real-time lighting system. So all the money that gets spent in rendering today is on simulating fantastic lighting effects. We're not going to do that. We're going to enable you to visualize what a real-time system would look like. What we're really just doing is borrowing unbelievable video game technology and just applying it to a different industry. So one thing I'm curious about from the presentation last time, it sounded like some of what we just saw was sort of aspirational, like what the company will be able to do automatically. How much of is it, is it manual now, and like how far along are you toward automating it? Sure. So I think of automation as being the thing that allows us to generate this entire process more profitably. The things that are fully automated end to end today are around the capture system. So we can gather data that townhouse was created in about an hour. And then on the exploration system. So everything that you saw here was being driven by Dan in real time as we were moving through the space. That's all streaming through the browser. You go to our website, you can see a link, and we'll give you a free model to do that. Same thing with our iPad app. What's not yet perfectly automated is the editing tool. So that's what we're building right now. I've got most of the team working on it. Then what's also not being built is the refinement tool. And that's like world-class computer vision research. I think that we've got an unbelievable team that's doing R&D on that. But I don't really worry about that whole thing being automated right now, because at the end of the day, we're delivering a product that our customers are super happy to pay for. And as long as we can just make that, shorter, that process time shorter and shorter, we'll have a great business. What you, since you raised the question, what are your customers paying? Our customers pay. And who's paying? <laughs> sure. So our customers are squarely the owners of commercial real estate. Uh, today, we're substituting out expensive marketing activities like having someone generate a floor plan by hand, generate 3D renderings by hand. One static 3D rendering in New York City costs five to ten grand. Um, and today, they pay us on the square footage depending on which services they're buying. So you want the scan that can be as cheap as ten to twenty cents a square foot. That's 100% disruptively low. You want a service like a design service, we're going to undercut all the folks who are doing it totally manually today, but we actually make decent money there at a dollar to two dollars a square foot. Does it make sense at this point for people who are selling their homes to use this? Because it it sure seems like it's a lot better than looking at pictures of homes. Totally. So, yeah. But is it too, is it a lot of work? I mean, it seems like there's a bit of work, expense, the camera has to be found. And 
So that's the, yeah. that's the difficulty to selling to the home industry right now is that you've got a fragmented customer base. Matterport's going to sell the camera directly to the consumer base, and I expect people What's to purchase it. What's the cost it. of the camera right now on retail? Uh, it doesn't exist. You can't buy it right now. When they expensive. <laughs> uh, it, yeah. Uh, we've had a first view. It's, it's surprisingly inexpensive. The guts of the camera, the, the original yeah. uh, story behind the camera came be out of the Connect Hack meetup. So the 3D sensor has actually been commoditized. Uh, it's a very cheap device. So someday a real estate office will have one of these. I, I certainly hope so. Yeah. Although yeah. My, my pushback there would be that real estate owners today don't often do the marketing service that they hire for. They don't have photographers on staff. They don't have videographers on yeah. staff. I would be surprised if they took 3D camera mm -hmm. capture on staff. It's certainly possible. Okay. For us, I don't, I, don't, I don't care. I want as much geometric data as possible created so that we can turn it into virtual worlds. So how big is the commercial real estate market for services? You said 30 billion, but that was all of real estate, right? That's just commercial real estate. Oh, so yes, okay. the commercial real estate industry is one of the largest industries in the US, $11 trillion of total value. That's the a marketing big market. Yeah, it's massive. So the marketing services piece, you can think of as being like two or 3% of that. And that's where we just see analog business after analog analog business and a huge opportunity. Is there a way to do this without the Matterport camera? You have to have a very expensive 3D scanner. Uh, just to give you a comp, the cheapest 3D scanner that you can buy today is about $50,000. So consumers never do it. Uh, you get l surveying companies will buy 3D scanners. You get, um, I'm trying to think what other, you, you get companies in crime scene you know, reconfiguration that will buy laser scanners. There's a whole industry around it. But what's disruptive about Matterport, and the reason why I wanted to back them so early, was that the, pri the price point of the camera that they're delivering is an order of magnitude lower. And so it's going to bring 3D scanning to the masses, which then opens, to my eyes, up a software opportunity to refine the 3D data. So asked before and you said that oh, you it'll can't, be you it'll can't be like it, a so nice it's... DSLR. So it'll be it'll be like a nice digital camera is what it'll cost. It's a few thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. Oh, two, three, five. There are a few other companies that have been working on using connect like technology to do three yeah. D scanning of spaces. I guess here they're adding the, the digital image to give you a better quality. Because there are other people that'll give you the three D using Connect yeah. inexpensively. They, so they have the best team that I, look, I looked at a bunch of these companies early on, so I wanted to build on top of them. And second, they've figured out a way to take the Kinect, which is a two, three hundred dollar device in the hands of developers, and actually productize it so that we can go, I did that townhouse myself on an, for, in an hour. It's, it's unbelievable. You know, the architect that did it loves it, the end consumer loves it, and everything that everyone wants to do with it is they want to start moving furniture around inside of it. So all we did with the editing was take the number one feature request that we had from our commercial customers and start building a tool so that we could take ourselves out of the services business and into the software as a service business. So how deep is the technology stack that you've had to build? Because yeah. I understand that you want to leverage the camera providers sure. or you know, the 3D scanning capability that, that comes around, but how, how much can you build on top of that to make it offensible so you don't have a dozen competitors you know, knocking down your price a year from now? Uh, I, I think a tremendous amount. I mean, we've got folks with computer vision, deep computer vision backgrounds who also have machine learning so we can learn from textures that we see in one, can, you know, in one home and bring it to another. I mean, out of a company of 10 people, eight are software engineers. And so we're early. We haven't built a ton of IP yet, but I'd like to think that every dollar of profit that we take in from our customers goes back into engineering hiring so that we build big defensible technology that can refine 3D data no matter what the input was. And so what's the nature of what is hard or what will be defensible? Is it understanding the textures? Is it the workflow that you're building, the software know-how to so serve the customer? I think it's all hard because I'm not good at it. But the truth is, is that mapping textures onto simplified geometry is an unbelievably difficult problem. Optimizing the 3D rendering so that it's happening in the browser and on mobile devices, also hard. Uh, but you can use Unity to do that. We do today. Okay. We're just moving off of it because we need more control over the system. Okay. So we built the system on Unity to get started. <laughs> you invested in Unity, yeah. I know. So a bunch of you guys have invested in these great companies. We think there's a need to, uh, to provide refinement software on top. We're also very close to our end customers. So we get paid today by these guys who have never seen, they see crappy software on a relative basis. They don't buy most of it. When we walk into the room, their jaws drop because they've never seen anything like this. And so it's cool to be very close to the end customer because every time we learn about what they want, we can go back and build it. Some of the other 3D uh, scanning companies I've seen require a fair amount of manual retouching after you do the scan. Yep. Is that a significant part of the process here, a lot of professional services? Yes. So the, the piece of the puzzle that is the hardest to automate is going from messy 
unrefined 3D data to whatever someone has dreamt up in their mind how they want that refined. Right. But are we building a team to solve that problem given enough time? I think so. So that the, a customer engagement would look like scanning a space a significant amount of time from your team to manually touch it up and get it into a customer presentable format. Then a customer works with you to do furniture layouts and things like that. That makes it sound a lot more difficult. So we hire college kids to do the scanning. You can be trained how to do a scan in 15 minutes. So that part is fully automated, super easy. Second, we've been able to go from scan to the World Trade Center in about 72 hours. So we've been able to take a lot of the time that's involved, and we've picked off pieces of that puzzle. So we're automating it piece by piece so that we can get to the output immediately. I don't know if we're ever going to be able to do it in real time to go from raw to complete, but the point is it doesn't matter. We're substituting these processes that take weeks and months to do. What's the biggest software company that's been built in the commercial real estate marketing space? CoStar is a listings business that's got a market cap probably about $3 billion. Um, it's, I, I mean, it's embarrassing. There's but not that's a bunch. More of a, that's more of a database, right, for what's available yeah. in listings. Yeah. How about software that is provided as part of this marketing process? I would, I would turn the question almost back to you, which is like, what kind of software do you think these guys do? They're, 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 it's a dinosaur age. They, yeah. they make their money based on the, the way that they buy and sell properties and the market dynamics and how they finance the building. They never make their money based on what good software they use. So we're coming in with just a radical approach. Implied in the question, I think, is a concern that these companies won't spend a lot of money on software, and so as a result, it might be challenging, given the manual nature of what you're doing, to end up building a very large, high-margin business here. So we substitute, just let me walk you through a quick example. A 10,000 square foot property here in New York might, if they were to try and do everything that we do there, you'd have to buy a 3D rendered video, you'd have to buy a few static 3D renderings, you'd have to shoot some photography and video and make some print materials. The total cost of that might be something around $70,000 because the 3D video is so expensive and the 3D renderings as well. They come back to us and say, there's no way I'm spending $70,000. Maybe I'll spend thirty dollars to $40,000 because on a five-year lease at a $40 a square foot, that's $2 million in annual value for that business. So they take the marketing budget, sorry if I'm, I'm doing this, but, but maybe they've got a marketing budget of a forty grand. We come in and say, we're gonna charge you a dollar or two dollars per square foot. So we're a fraction of the budget they already have and we're saving them huge time and hassles on the stuff that they already buy. But most importantly, we give them an experience that crushes the experience of the marketing services they do today. Hmm. Any other questions? No. Hmm. All right, great job guys, that's four. Thank you. Thank you.